Hi, I'm Malachi Greb, CEO of Elite Automation. There's a question that I get asked all the time, almost every single day, and I want to answer that question. And that question is, how do I get involved in the industrial automation space? How do I get involved with controls engineering, robotics, overall the whole entire automation process? And it seems like people really want to be able to do the entire automation process. They want to be able to do the type of work an integrator can do. Uh, and the, it, it, people are not just wanting to do... PLC programming or robot programming or vision or electrical engineering. It seems like people are really wanting to be in the overall automation process. Now, uh, whether they want to be in an engineering role or if they want to be more of a process engineer, uh, I think they overall just want to be very deeply involved with the process of automation. And, and, and the question that I'm really getting asked is, you know, how do I start? Where do, where do I start? What, what should I do uh, to be able to even get a job in this role? Uh, some people are, are asking this question who are already um, like a PLC programmer, a robot programmer, or they program in structured text for uh, a software company. I, I get this request actually a lot from outside uh people, people who are not necessarily in the industrial automation space or food processing space. Uh, they're not really doing much with automation yet, but some people are. Some people are already in the automation space and they feel like they're still not where they want to be at in the space. And so I, I, I always want to kind of default and say, get a job with the systems integrator. Like they, that, That's like my default answer. Get a job with a systems integrator because they're going to expose you to uh, a wide variety of, of technologies and applications and you're just going to overall you'll never gain any more experience anywhere else as you would with a systems integrator. Uh, and for those who don't know what a systems integrator is, they're essentially a company that builds automated equipment. They build manufacturing equipment. So they may build the assembly line for a Toyota or they may... Uh, you know, build a robotic cells that go on the end of a line that unloads the line and stacks things on a skid. They may uh, design something that uh, is doing a quality inspection with a vision camera. So uh, the, the overall, the systems integrator, they, there's a ton of different applications, especially if you work for a systems integrator who is working with multiple different types of applications. They're not just spitting out the same type of machinery all the time. They do a lot of custom applications. Uh, if they're doing the custom applications and they give you the ability to like work freely, that is the place to go. But I have to say, like with really thinking on that question, it is not the first route for a lot of people. A lot of people do not have what it takes and don't have the skill set needed to be able to get into a system integrator. And uh, I kind of want to dive a little bit more into talking about how to get into a systems integrator facility. And that is you need a base level skill. You have to be able to uh, have enough skill set that they would even want to employ you for any reason. Um, somebody could come to me today and say, hey, look, I'm here, I'll help, I'll do whatever you need me to, and that's great and all. But if that is a true fact, then you need to put in some type of education towards uh, obtaining the skills to be able to do some particular job so that way you can be employed now. You can be employed uh, on a particular application at this moment, and maybe not even as a skilled engineer who can... Um, perform the task on their own, but an engineer who uh, can at least sit with another engineer and be taught and, and have a, a basic vocabulary of what's going on and understanding of what's going on and maybe an understanding of different programming languages. Um, and so a, a few things that I'd find very, very valuable is if you could do PLC programming, robot programming, or a structured text programming language. Uh, any of those three will definitely accelerate you in being able to uh, be of value to an automation integrator. Now, uh, you don't have to be good at those. Like I was saying, you don't have to be an expert at those at all. You just have to have some exposure to them. Even a little bit of exposure to all three, or a lot of expo or a lot more exposure to one. I'll be honest. People who can program in structured text, uh, to me, I find super super valuable, just because. For me, structured text is like one of the most advanced uh, languages there are, and 
I think that if you're able to program a structured text, you're able to pretty much program in any language because you understand a lot of programming nuances. You understand a lot of things that go on in the background of programming and uh, how things work. The downfall to a lot of people who know structured text is they know nothing about manufacturing processes. They tend to be kind of terrible at um, process control and understanding that, hey, I need this cylinder to extend. And uh, Now, if you're a really good structured text programmer, surely you can like adapt your knowledges to uh, from like web design or whatever it is you've done with your structured text to industrial automation applications. Uh, say for instance, clicking a button, opening up a web page, being the equivalent of pressing a button on HMI and uh, may maybe making a, a cylinder actuate. So one, having that beginning skill set is kind of a, a must. Uh, there, there is a slight caveat to that. And this is kind of the most valuable thing that you can add to really any company that's not just a systems integrator, but being a dedicated employee. That, to me, that, that is the biggest trait somebody can have, is being a dedicated employee. And what I mean by being a dedicated employee, I mean to make the company feel that you're going to be by their side. Whoever, whoever the lead person is of that company, whoever it is that's going to be doing the hiring, um, whoever the owner is, making those people feel like you're going to be there. You're never, you're not going to go nowhere. It's going to be years before you leave. Uh, they can put, you know, their efforts into training you and getting you up to speed and feeling like you're still going to be there. Uh, that that's a huge, huge value add. I I honestly would rather take a college student with no background. Let let me train them up to where they need to be, or one of uh, our employees train them up where they need to be, and then. Have them spend a few years with us at least to kind of get some of that value back out of them and, you know, kind of build this process of now this person's trained, we bring in another college student, maybe that college student helps train this new college student we bring in, and you kind of build this process of uh, getting people trained up and, and build this ecosystem of constantly growing the skill sets within your company. And by making your employer feel like you're dedicated, they're going to want to dump more into you. They're going to want to invest more into you. They're going to want to teach you more. They're going to want to expose you to more, which means you're going to get more experience in the long run. Um, I Honestly, there's no way I would be where I'm at today if I didn't work for a systems integrator directly out of college. And actually, while I was still in college, um, I didn't have a lot of on-the-job training, like pretty much zero. I had to self-teach myself the majority of everything I know. But that gave me the ability to be exposed to so many different applications, so many different programming languages, uh, overall just gaining so much experience that, to be honest, like I think in the, the 10 years I've been in the industrial automation space, that it is the equivalent of almost 30 years of working at a Toyota and just being a general maintenance employee. Being a general maintenance employee is kind of like one of the worst jobs for building these skill sets out because a lot of these companies won't even let you touch the PLC, won't even let you touch the robot. Like You have to be one of their lead process tech guys to be able to even touch those type of pieces of equipment. And a lot of times companies don't have a ton of those guys on staff. A lot of times they may just have maybe one to five and that's that's what I see like pretty stereotypical. You may have a ton of process engineers but people who are actually diving into the PLC, diving into the programming. Uh, you know, being a process engineer is helpful and you do gain some experience. It's kind of one of the more I consider entry level as far as needing a skill set to be able to do um, and, and still get automation over process and overall process control exposure because a lot of automation and being able to program is understanding processes. Um, to be honest, if I didn't have like a, such an intuitive knowledge to processes and have been in like around manufacturing equipment for so much of my life, um, it would be very, very difficult for me to be able to program the way that I do and uh, be able to accomplish the type of jobs that I can accomplish. And it's, it's overall just because of having that exposure. So I want to dive kind of back into the dedication side of things. I get sidetracked a lot when I'm doing videos. But uh, on the dedication side of things, there's so many things that you can do to make your employer feel dedicated. You can show up early to work. You can stay later. You can uh, be willing to take pay sacrifices, um, be able to sh show up 
to free training. Uh, a lot of these things, like, they are sacrifices, but think about it like this. You're gaining the most experience from whoever's going to be employing you, right? And you pay for college. Your employer or a place of employment will be able to build your skill set so much stronger, so much faster, especially from a systems integrator, that it is years of college experience. Just to put it in relation, two years working for a systems integrator is well worth six years of college. Um, well worth. I mean, if you're really, really putting in the dedication to learn, I would say two years of the systems integrator could be as close to ten years of college or or even ten years of on-the-job training at a, at a facility like a Toyota where you're just doing maintenance. So for most people asking this question, they probably don't even have their foot in the door with the systems integrator. So some of these things might be kind of hard for you to apply, like showing up to work early, leaving later. So one thing you can do is come in for free training. Like let your employer know, hey, I will come in for free training. I will sit with one of your controls engineer. I don't care if it's PLC program, robot program. Don't be picky. Just say, hey, I'll, I'll take whatever you can give me. I'll look at prints. I'll do whatever. Uh, maybe try to avoid doing a lot of physical labor stuff because a lot of companies will potentially try to take advantage of that. It, they may just put you to work on building some stuff or doing whatever. And if they're going to do something like that, then yes, they, they need to be paying you, even if it's minimum wage and, and we're calling it a training experience. But if you're going to be doing a ton of that, uh, I would just overall try to avoid a lot of that. I would rather work for free and put in the time sitting with their controls engineer because that's what's going to leapfrog you years into the future and that's what's going to actually hire them to that's what's actually going to get them to hire you into a controls engineering position uh be, doing like mechanical assembly it's going to be hard for them to make that leap you're going to gain some experience and that experience is going to be super valuable but uh for you to get to where you actually want to be in like a controls engineering aspect uh you want to build those skill sets out so that way you're applicable. That way you're able to be put to the job. That way uh, whenever something arises and they're in a pinch, they utilize you. So I just I wouldn't I wouldn't be picky at all. I would just choose whatever it is that they have, a PLC, robot, some type of structured text, even if it's vision system uh, set up, any aspect of any of that. Uh, even if it's changing tags in, in, in a PLC and doing some monotonous thing, at least you're seeing the overall user interface and you're getting exposure to terminology and, and uh, whatnot. I'll tell you right now, one of the biggest things that is stopping people who are already employed, people who are already working with a systems integrator from being in a controls engineering position is because they all don't already have some type of controls engineering experience because the employer doesn't feel like they can put you on some type of job and that threshold right there is a huge threshold because as soon as they start putting you on jobs your experience that's when it, your experience skyrockets and they they're not going to want to put you on those jobs unless you're doing work for free or they think you're able to handle those type of jobs or at least handle some aspect of those type of jobs. So that's what's going to be super valuable for both you and the employer. And whenever I'm telling you guys to do these things, I'm telling you because I know they're going to work. They're things that I have personally done. I had took it, I've taken years of my life being like pretty well underpaid, pretty well underpaid, probably I'd say almost $5 under industry average my entire career. And I did it because I was chasing opportunity, chasing uh, being with a company. And, and try to grow within that company and become be an entrepreneur, uh, be basically an entrepreneur within a company. Uh, that's basically what entrepreneur means. But I took that road, I took that route, and even though on a financial uh, scheme of things, as far as like my financial success, it, it took a pretty decent hit from being underpaid for such a period of time, but one thing that can't be taken away is the amount of experience that I gained, and I still wouldn't take back the the way that I did things. The only even I I wouldn't even necessarily work for another integrator that paid me better. Just just to be completely honest, uh, I could have worked for another company who's like way further into the future, has way more business structure set up. Uh, but overall, those were the experiences that like really put me in a pinch 
made me be able to step up and program some type of system that I'd never programmed before, gave me the opportunity to program on platforms before that I'd never programmed on, and program applications that I'd never programmed before because the company being in a pinch, because I was there, I had some level of skill set to be able to perform that job and doing that and then doing it and then doing it and doing it over and over and over again until I got to the point where I feel like I could run my own company and be able to train other people to do those type of jobs and add more people to the industry that have these skill sets and can help add to the industry of automation because it's a growing field, it's a growing industry, and there's not enough of us out there. So guys, I'm going to wish you luck on your career success as a controls engineer. Uh, maybe one day you can even work for Elite Automation. We'd love to have you along. Um, we're a growing company, new company, and we're looking for people who are dedicated and ready to kill it, ready to crush it. We want to do business different. We want to do business better. We want to do business faster. We want to deliver. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully this video was insightful. If you have any questions, put them down in the comments below. Uh, I'll make sure to make another video for you guys to answer those questions, especially if I get repetitive questions. Uh, but this was a very repetitive question. Had to answer it. Thank you for viewing, guys, and I'll catch you all in the next one.